been a while. <laughs> um, I don't know how many times on this channel I've said it's been a while because I clearly have no accountability when it comes to making videos, but I have a genuine valid excuse this time. So much has happened in the past month. I recently got a new job. I started a new job in April and that is doing a load of like media and data, sort of mostly media stuff in a school, like marketing and media and making videos and doing the website and stuff in a secondary school uh, in Salisbury in England. The whole plan was for me to move to Salisbury so I can actually be in the area. So that's what I've done. I'm now in a new flat. <laughs> um, since I last spoke to you, I have moved house. I now live in Salisbury. Uh, it's very strange, like so much has happened, it's ridiculous. I have purple hair now. Um, <laughs> It's changed again. I really like the purple. I'm kind of like feeling like it's gonna be something I might stick to for a little while. Like I keep changing hair color, but purple, I'm kind of a big fan of it. So who knows, let's see how long it lasts. But yeah, I'm in my new flat now. I have my wall of bookshelves again, um, but this room that I'm in is so massive. Like it's a huge room, it's basically I'll, while I'm talking, I'll insert some clips over the top of my flat. But it's kind of like a studio flat, but with a separate kitchen. So I have a combined sort of bedroom living area, but with a sort of divider wall. My bedroom is one side of it, and then the other side of it, I've got my sofa, um, all my bookshelves behind me, my TV, and then sort of a little office corner um, where I've got my desk and all my DVDs on a big shelf and my printer and things like that. And I think I've got it finally how I like it. And yeah, it now means that I've got this giant sort of living space. So I've got tons of room to make videos. So I'm kind of sitting in the middle of the room. Um, and it means that I can film with all my bookshelves behind me and have a really good book background, which is great. I love it. I just thought because it's been over a month since I've uploaded anything on this channel, somehow I've still been gaining subscribers fairly regularly. I'm up to like almost 640 now, which is amazing, considering I haven't been making anything for over a month. That's so good. And people have still been commenting on, on my videos. And yeah, I just, I appreciate you all so much. You're incredible. So I thought today I would quickly go over some of the books that I've got recently, because it's been ages since I've made anything here. I've gained so many books, whether I've got pre-orders, there were quite a few pre-orders, um, proofs that I've got, that I've been sent. Um, I also went to Rocket Ship Books. Um, it's the Rocket Ship Bookshop in Salisbury yesterday. I've been wanting to go for so long since I moved here. Um, I've been sort of like desperate to go and visit and I finally got to yesterday and I'm so happy that I did. Um, I had a really nice chat with Jo who works there and she uh, remembered that we follow each other on social media, which was really nice. Uh, so I bought a bunch of books there because I just had to. <laughs> I found ones that have been sort of anticipated ones for ages that I've wanted to read. Ones that she's got like a big, they've got a big sale shelf there with ones that are either just stock they want to get rid of or secondhand books. So I got a couple from there as well for reduced prices, which was amazing. Let me go and get all the books. I probably should have prepared and actually got the books ready to show you, but I don't. They're kind of dotted all over the place. So let me go and get the books and then I'll come back and show you all the books that I've got recently. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. I have the books. So the first one, um, I mean, none of these are in a particular order because I can't remember the order that I got them, but um, I'll start with this one because I'm currently reading it. I've got about a quarter of the book left, I think. Uh, and that is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I love this book so much already. Um, in case you don't know, The Martian is one of my favorite books like ever. Um, and his second book, Artemis was okay. I, I enjoyed it, but I didn't really love it. Um, but Project Hail Mary kind of goes back to the Martians sort of uh, roots where it's kind of a man on his own in space, which is exactly what the Martian is and did so well. So this is about a man called Rylan Grace who wakes up on a spaceship somewhere in space. He can't remember who he is. He can't remember his crew, why he's up there, 
literally anything about his life. He's forgotten everything. And on his own, on this spaceship, he needs to try and figure out who he is, his own identity, and then why he's up there, because he's actually up there to save humanity. Uh, and he needs to slowly sort of learn who, even just who he is before he can remember what he needs to do to save everyone on Earth. So good. It's just incredible. Um, I It's one of those books where I don't want to tell you too much about it because you need to just read it. Like, I'm glad that I didn't really know that much about it going into it beyond what is in the blurb, which is what I just told you. I have absolutely no idea how this book is going to end in the last quarter or so. Um, I am so desperate to finish it. I've been so busy the past week or two weeks even that I just haven't read anything. So yeah, desperate to finally read this and finish it. So next I have one that was one of the most anticipated ones after I read The Henna Wars last year and that is Hanny and Issue's Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba Jagadar. I am so excited to read this. Uh, this is one of my pre-orders that came out quite recently. Um, as I just said, I loved The Henna Wars last year. Uh, it was just, the representation was so good and the story was just so great and it was one of those books that made me realise that maybe I don't hate romance in general, it's just straight romance I find boring. <laughs> so this is um, Adiba's next book that recently came out and I'm very excited to read this. So I'll read the blurb for this. Uh, easygoing and popular, Hani Khan has it all until she comes out as bisexual and her friends don't believe her. An academic overachiever, Issue Day has a lot to prove, but her, her shot at head girl relies on being popular. Their solution? Pretend to be dating, even though they hardly know each other and definitely don't like each other. But as they get closer, things get messy. Can two Bengali girls find happily ever after, even when the odds are stacked against them? So yet again, really good representation that isn't just sort of white teenagers um, and obviously gotta love that uh, sapphic representation as well. Very excited about this and this cover is also just stunning. <laughs> Another one that I have been ridiculously excited about is Off the Record by Cameron Garrett. Uh, another one where I read uh, this author's debut book um, which was why have I forgotten the name of it? Full Disclosure, Jesus. <laughs> Full Disclosure, I read um, a while ago now and adored it so much. Um, it has everything that I love. It has tons of representation. Um, it has like a, teenagers who talk about sex and relationships quite openly. Um, gay dads, which is something that we don't see very much in YA. Um, it has musical theatre, like everything. And it also has uh, HIV representation as well, which is something that I haven't really read very much of. So Off the Record is Cameron Garrett's latest book, came out this month, I think, if not the end of last month, I think it was this month. And again, very excited to read this just because Cameron's book, first book, I adored. So here's the blurb for this one. 17 year old Josie is living a young journalist's dream when she wins a contest to write a celebrity profile for her favourite magazine, especially once she meets the charming new actor at its centre. But there's a dark side to the glitz and glamour and Josie is suddenly in the perfect position to expose it. A young actress trusts her with a terrible secret and Josie realises she's in over her head. Is it her story to tell? What if she lets down the women entrusting her with their secrets? And will revealing it jeopardise her writing career before it's even begun? There are so many reasons to forget what she's been told. But one secret is followed by another and another until Josie needs to decide whether to step up and what she can bear to sacrifice for the truth. All of these books I'm so excited about, but this one is one in particular that I've been excited about for ages. <laughs> Next, I have Grow by Luke Palmer. This is a proof copy that I was sent from Firefly Press. Um, a local, well, I say local press to me, they were when I was in Newport, they're based in Cardiff. Um, and yeah, I've been sent this book and I'm very excited for it. Little sneak peek for something that's gonna be coming um, very soon. This book comes out on the 1st of July and on that date, I should be doing something on my channel um, to launch this book and I'm very excited. <laughs> so keep an eye out for that. As soon as I know more details, I will uh, tell you more about that. 
but this is the blurb for this one. Josh is an average football playing teenager with plenty of friends until his father is killed in a terrorist bombing. Struggling to cope with grief, Josh withdraws from friends and family, but begins to find himself targeted by a white, su white supremacist group as a potential recruit. Will he be drawn in or, with the help of unlikely accomplice Dana, find the strength to resist and plant something good in the space grief has left inside him? So this is kind of interesting to me because now that I've started a job in a secondary school, uh, I had to do so much training and stuff at the beginning, like tons of sort of safeguarding training. And part of that training was all about teenagers being drawn into terrorism. And it's something that when you look at it, for the first time as someone like me where I've never worked in a school, I've never really worked with teenagers before. It's something that I have never really thought of as being a problem. Obviously I'm in such a privileged position where I've, that something like that has never been part of my life. Uh, I think this is going to be a book that's perfect timing for me really, um, because I think it's going to show just how prevalent that is in some people's lives and how if they get into that sort of group it can be easy for them to be swayed to sort of take on other people's beliefs that are less than ideal. So yeah I'm very excited to read this one and as I said also excited to be part of the launch on my channel which I'll tell you more about once I know more information about it so keep an eye out for that. Next I have Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. Yet another book where uh, I read the author's, um, or an author's previous book, uh, King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar, I read last year and again I loved it so much, I adored it. It was a middle grade um, that kind of talked about grief and sexuality in sort of younger um, people, so sort of pre-teen, and it was amazingly written and I adored everything about it. So Felix, Felix Ever After is Case and Calendar's latest book and um, very excited. I read uh, 14 pages of this before I started moving house and then I haven't picked it back up again. So desperate to pick this one back up. I've been so excited for this for so long but it was only published in the US so as soon as it was published here in the UK um, and this gorgeous paperback came out. I mean, look at these sprayed edges. Just amazing. Um, I was so excited to pre-order it. Motorbike just went past my window. So this is the blurb for this one. Felix Love has never been in love, and yes, he's painfully aware of the irony. He desperately wants to know what it's like and why it seems so easy for everyone but him to find someone. What's worse is that even though he's proud of his identity, Felix also secretly fears that he's one marginalisation too many, black, queer and transgender, to ever get his own happily ever after. When an, when an anonymous student begins sending him transphobic messages after publicly posting Felix's dead name alongside images of him before he transitioned, Felix comes up with a plan for revenge. What he didn't count on, his catfish scenario landing him in a quasi love triangle. But as he navigates his complicated feelings, Felix begins a journey of questioning and self-discovery that helps redefine his most important relationship, how he feels about himself. I really need to read more books with trans characters because it's something that I don't think is very common at the moment. Um, there's more books coming out and it's very exciting but any books with like trans or non-binary characters really need to read more of so this is going to be very exciting and I can't wait to read it and again another stunning cover that I just love. Next we're I'm getting through this pile I am I'm about halfway through. <laughs> Um, so next I have Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. This is volume four. Oh, one of my most anticipated books this year. Um, if you know me, you know that I love Heartstopper. I love how much this cover goes with my hair. I've only just noticed, love that. I love Heartstopper so much. I've made videos about it in the past. Um, I'll link them up there or below. Um, and I have written blog posts about it. I just love it with my entire heart. Um, I'm also very excited for the TV adaptation, the Netflix adaptation coming soon. I've been following everything about that. Can't wait. Um, I've already read this. I read this as soon as it arrived. <laughs> um, I have the copy that's signed by Alice and I have a little Charlie doodle, which I adore. Um, 
love this so much. I need to make my video review of this because I've made videos about the rest of them. So I need to just keep that up and review this one. So I won't say too much about this now. Um, look out for a video about this coming very soon. Next up, I have another proof and uh, this is called Incredible Doom. And it's a graphic novel, which is really cool. The first couple of pages kind of show you what the color is gonna be like. It's all sort of blue. Um, but the rest of it is just sort of printed in black and white just because it's the proof. Um, I, again, I read this pretty quickly when it came out because it's a graphic novel so I can sort of fly through them quite quickly. And it's really interesting. It's, uh, it kind of takes you back to the very beginning of the internet when the internet was just sort of forums and it wasn't, it was by far not the internet that we know today. But it's about all of, how all of these teenagers sort of get to know each other through the very early internet and they all have their own issues they're facing and they all sort of meet and help each other with these issues that they're facing. So good. Um, I'll probably review this on my blog soon. It came out um, in May, so I really need to get a review up for this soon. I will do that as soon as possible. Another issue that I have right now is that I don't have Wi-Fi in my flat. <laughs> I've got like a few days until my Wi-Fi is activated here. So any blog stuff I can't really do. Um, so like videos like this and like my podcast episodes, I've been editing at home and then uploading in work. Uh, but yeah, any blog posts and stuff are kind of held off until I get my Wi-Fi because I can't really sit in work and write blog posts. But yes, a review of this will be coming to my blog soon. Uh, the link's in the description or it's wonderfullybookish.co.uk if you're interested. Next is another pre-order that came out yesterday, I think, uh, at the time of filming. And that is Ace of Spades by Farida Abike-Amide. Very excited about this again. Um, I haven't read, another thing that I haven't read very much of is sort of dark academia. And this is definitely that. Um, I've only recently kind of learned what that is and I'm still trying to really learn what that means. There's all these different aesthetics and stuff that I have not been really into that people are obsessed with recently. And Dark Academia is one of them. Um, but yeah, I'm still trying to learn what all of these phrases mean. I feel like an old lady sometimes trying to learn all of these new internet phrases and like, aesthetic and genre names and stuff. But this is what I've regularly seen people classing as dark academia. So that's what I'm gonna say this is. <laughs> it sounds very good um, and I'm very excited about it. So the blurb for this one. Welcome to Nivea's private academy where money paves the hallways and the students are never less than perfect. Until now, because anonymous texter Aces is bringing two students dark secrets to light. Talented musician Devon buries himself in rehearsals, but he can't escape the spotlight when his private photos go public. Head girl Chiamaka isn't afraid to get what she wants, but soon everyone will know the price she's paid for power. Someone is out to get them both, someone who holds all the aces, and they're planning much more than a high school game. So it sounds very tense, very dark, and uh, I haven't read anything like that for a little while. I've been sort of reading a lot of light-hearted stuff. I think I've kind of forgotten what I've even read this year, but yeah, it sounds something different to what I usually read. And it was kind of part of the reason why I got this. I know it's queer and people have just been saying how incredible it is. So I had to get a copy of it, of course. So the final proof that I've been sent recently is Love and Other Natural Disasters by Misa Sugiura. And this is another Koya book that um, I'm very excited to read. I'm trying to just get all the Koya books that I can possibly read at the moment. And when Harper did a call out for all of their proofs that they've got recently, I dived on this one because it just sounds so good. So the blurb for Love and Other Natural Disasters. When Nozomi Nagai pictured the ideal summer romance, a fake one wasn't what she had in mind. That was before she met the perfect girl. Willow is gorgeous, glamorous and heartbroken. And when she enlists Nozomi to pose as her new girlfriend to make her ex jealous, Nozomi is a, a willing volunteer. Because Nozomi has a master plan of her own, one to show Willow she's better than a stand-in and turn their fomance into something real. But as the lies pile up, it's not long before Nozomi's schemes take a turn towards disaster and maybe a chance at love she didn't plan for. So we've got another fake dating. <laughs> I seem to have um, two fake dating books here. I definitely want to read more of those because I realised it's something that I like. It's just a lot of fun. So yeah, 
Again, excited for this one. And I love this proof cover as well. So finally, I've got four left. And these are the books that I bought yesterday when I went to Rocket Ship in Salisbury. So um, the first one, I realised how long I've been recording here. This wasn't going to be a super long video, but can I make short videos? <laughs> no, I can't. The first one is The Past and Other Things That Should Stay Buried by Sean David Hutchinson. I have wanted to read a Sean David Hutchinson book for so long because I've just heard so many people saying how amazing his books are. Um, uh, books and Lala on booktube um, really loves his books, I think. And uh, yeah, I've just seen so many people talk about how amazing these books are and how all of his stories are just so clever and um, very sort of weird fiction. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to read this one. So the blurb is, Dino doesn't mind spending time with the dead. His parents own a funeral home and death is literally the family business. He's just not used to them talking back. Until Dino's ex-best friend, July, dies suddenly and then comes back to life except not exactly. Somehow July is not quite alive and not quite dead. As Dino and July attempt to figure out what's happening, they must also confront why and how their friendship ended so badly and what they've left to understand about themselves, each other, and all those grand mysteries of life. Critically acclaimed author Sean David Hutchinson delivers another wholly unique novel blending the real and the surreal, while reminding all of us what it is to love someone through and around our faults. Next, I have Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. I loved Nicola Yoon's other books, so Everything Everything and The Sun is Also a Star. I loved those so much, so when I saw this cover, I really was so excited for this book, and I had to get it when I saw it yesterday. Um, so this one, the blurb is, uh, if Evie Thomas knows one thing, it's that love doesn't last. When she sees a couple kiss, she gets a vision of their whole relationship, from the moment they first catch each other's eye to the last bitter moments of their breakup. It's more than enough reason for her to keep boys at arm's length. But then, at La Brie Dance Studio, she meets X, tall, dreadlocked, fascinating, and as they dance around and towards each other, Evie finds herself wondering if, after all, love might be worth the risk. So this isn't something that I'd usually read, like romance like this is definitely not my cup of tea normally, but I just love Nicola Hume's writing and yeah, since I read her first two books, I have kind of, she's become one of my sort of auto-buy authors where I'll just read anything she writes. So even though it's not my usual thing that I read, um, I'm still very excited to see what it's like because I just always love her writing style. Last but one, I have Music From Another World by Robin Talley. I have had a couple of people already tell me that they uh, adored this book and Robin Talley's other books. I've never read any of Robin Talley's books before, so this will be a first one. But as, as soon as I saw the blurb and realised that it's another queer book, <laughs> I picked it up. And again, another book that looks really good with my hair. <laughs> It's 1977 and the USA is tearing itself apart and so is Tammy Larson. 17 and scared, the girl from Orange County has a secret that her strict community and conservative family must never find out, one that she's only ever shared in unposted letters to her hero, Harvey Milk. She's gay. Hundreds of miles away, Tammy's new pen pal is dealing with a few secrets of her own. Sharon Hawkins lives in foggy San Francisco, an exciting city full of protests and punk music. But as the letters pile up in her desk drawer, Sharon begins to realise that her world might not be that different to Tammy's after all. Set to a soundtrack of Bowie, Blondie and a whole lot of Patti Smith, the girls' worlds co converge in ways that they could have never imagined. With a fierce sense of rebellion and a feminist attitude to boot, Tammy and Sharon soon discover what it means to be their true selves, and one thing's for sure, they're both sick of blending in. So we've got feminism, we have gay teenagers, um, all set in the 70s, which uh, I haven't read many books recently that aren't sort of super contemporary. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. And as I flick through, I realised that it's written, I think, as letters. So yeah, I love a book that's written in a way that isn't just sort of standard prose. So can't wait to read this one. And then finally, <laughs> We've got to the last one, finally. Um, this is another one. This seems to be a bit of a um, trend in all these books that I've got this time, is books where I've read the author's debut novel or a previous book or all their previous books and they've had new ones out this year. So many authors have second or third books out this year and I'm 
very excited for them all. Um, so this one is The Crossing by Manjeet Man. I very recently, last year, read uh, Run Rebel by the same author. I reviewed it on my blog, so I'll link that in the description below. Um, and that was a verse novel, so um, which I really love. Um, again, I'll link another video where I talked all about verse novels, um, and I've written blog posts about them in the past as well. So yeah, when I found out that Manjeet Man was releasing another one, I was very excited. And it's here! I forgot that it was out! When I was in Rocket Ship yesterday, I saw it on the table and just kind of freaked out because I forgot that it was coming out so soon. Um, so I'm yeah very excited to read this and just like the last one it's another verse novel. So the blurb for this one. The boat sways and rocks, bodies pressed against bodies, holding on for our lives. Natalie's world is falling apart, she's just lost her mum and her brother marches the streets of Dover with a far-right gang. Swimming is her only refuge. Sammy has fled his home and family in Eritrea for the chance of a new life in Europe. Every step he takes is a step into an unknown and unwelcoming future. A twist of fate brings them together and gives them both hope, but is hope enough to mend a broken world? So there you go! Uh, that's all of the books, I think, that I've got recently, whether I've bought them or I've been sent them, and I, yeah, I don't know where I'm gonna start. I don't know which one to read first, but I'm very excited to read all of them. And yeah, please let me know in the comments below if you've read any of them or if you're excited about any of them that have come out recently, if you haven't read them yet. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd just give you a quick update today just to say that I am still here. Um, I've just been ridiculously busy, like starting a new job, moving to a whole new place that I've never lived in before and uh, yeah it's been stressful but exciting and I'm now very ready. Just sitting down recording this video has made me realise how ready I am just to get straight back into reading my books again and recording videos and hopefully when I've got wi-fi uh, in the next few days I'll be able to do that from my flat rather than having to re like record stuff at home and then upload it when I'm in work. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope you've had a good month so far. I hope you've had a great week and that your next week is wonderful too. Let me know in the comments what you're currently reading and yeah, I'll see you soon with a new video. Bye!